Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, what I'm going to do is discuss some very important scenarios of behavioral science, aka ethics questions that is not included in first aid, but quite often shows up in the exam. So if you listen to me very, very, very carefully, I'm going to take you to extensive journey of multiple scenario where you have to decide the answers from ethical point of view. So let us begin. First of all, I will talk about ethics committee. Okay, so there are multiple questions where you will find an uh, option like ethics committee in it. So what are the scenarios that you choose ethics committee? So ethics committee only get involved if for whatever reason a patient is not able to make any decision or the family is not being able to take any decision and the physician itself is unsure of what the patient is of best interest. So if three things fails, you have to choose the ethics committee as an answer. Okay. If a patient is registered or has a heart symbol on his license, he has made it clear that he wishes to donate his organ whatsoever. So in whatever situation, if there is heart symbol already given and if the some relative comes and tells you that, okay, uh, the patient is not allowed to you know, donate his organ, he should not donate, no, you should not uh, listen to any of them. The heart symbol itself signifies that uh, you can donate the organ, okay? 80 year old male with waxing and waning consciousness after intubation, grandson comes with an advanced directive signed by patient indicating that he does not wish to be intubated. So in most of the cases, you will find that advanced directive is what we follow. But uh, in this case, because of the waxing and waning consciousness, we, we choose to maintain the intubation until family conference can be maintained or scheduled. Why? For instance, he may have recently well... Uh, responded well to the medication and a sudden change in health that has made him want to prolong his life is a possible uh, scenario so in this case you in the cases where uh, like for example delirium uh, where waxing and waning of consciousness is um, observed uh, you should maintain the intubation until the family conference is maintained or scheduled okay more thing that i want to add over here is that the appointed durable power of attorney supersedes even a living will so uh, the power of attorney is basically more powerful than the living will okay uh, whenever there is a cases of uh, psychiatric illness for example schizophrenia it is very difficult to tell uh, what to do so in uh, carrying a diagnosis of schizophrenia doesn't uh, essentially make one incompetent okay competency is something that can only be determined by the legal system capacity on the other hand is what a patient must possess in order to make medical decision for themselves so capacity is what we determine but the competence competency is determined by the legal system of that uh, country or state patient with psychiatric disease still have legal rights to make medical decision for themselves next you can have a case of appendicitis uh, and while you are doing surgery you suddenly found some tumor uh, some mass let's say so what you what you gonna do and there will be multiple confusing options to choose but you choose to biopsy the tumor and terminate the surgery so you are not going to uh, you know take take out that tumor or reject that tumor what you are, what you can do is just take a biopsy of it and terminate the surgery for which you have really been doing okay and later you can uh, ask for the permission or uh, if it if that mass turns out to be malignant then you can take a decision of uh, doing some um, elective surgery okay this is an interesting case of decreasing beta hcg in a pregnant woman and after telling she starts crying so the first thing that you choose to tell to this kind of situation is uh, this is a difficult situation i will allow you gather your thoughts because why because you know silence is the golden when you can't think of a good answer so any option that tells you uh, allow her to gather her thoughts uh, will be the best answer in this case a mother with hiv comes to you with a recently tested infant with hiv positive now she asks you whether uh, she should breastfeed or not. Here you, you can be tempted to choose the answer uh, breastfeed the child because the child is already HIV positive. But this is wrong. This is wrong. Why? Because you know uh, approximately 25% of untreated women with HIV will transmit their virus to the baby. But all 100% of children uh, will have HIV positive test as positive if the mother is HIV positive because of the transmission of um, maternal antibodies through the placenta so this is a false positive test in the child and uh, uh, being HIV positive doesn't necessarily mean that the child is also acquiring HIV infection okay 
but telling that uh, don't breastfeed does not suffice okay you need to explain wh what is the reason so correct answer will be something that will be explaining to the mother why she should not breastfeed so correct answer will be something like you know let me explain a positive test when the child in is this young is not definitive but if you breastfeed your child you greatly increase the chances of your child contracting hiv now one question might come in your mind that what are the situations that i should not breastfeed and there are some situations when you should not breastfeed which includes hiv positive uh, or undergoing chemo or radiation therapy if the mother is going some chemo or radiation therapy uh, is untreated active tuberculosis or is using some illicit drugs refusing to treat a patient okay so refusing patient on any basis okay be it uh, sex or hiv positive or whatever uh, the status of the patient uh, maybe because of racial religious or sexual or sexual orientation will open up scrutiny from the judicial system ethics committee and your colleagues moreover once a doc, doc patient relation has been established the physician can't refuse to treat unless something falls outside of his scope of practice to do so uh, could be Con considered abandonment if a physician wishes to terminate a relationship for non-compliance for instance the patient should always be notified well ahead of time so they are able to establish care with another provider ending such relationship should be done both in person and through the use of notarized letter so that there is no question about it and so this is this falls under the american disabilities act okay so suppose if for any reasons you you want to end the relations with a uh, with the patient uh, the patient should be always notified well ahead of time okay and this should not be in person or this should not be through discussion but by the notarized letter so that there is no question about further uh, you know problem or dispute here comes one of the most important case uh, of a teenager maybe 12 13 14 whatever uh, comes to you and when you tell him about his smoking habit he might tell you that smoking is not a problem for him so what will be the correct response at this case and you will have a lot of confusing option i tell you most of the option will sound feasible and there is only one correct answer to it there is only one correct answer to it so uh, options could be like did you know long term complication of smoking do you do you want me to tell your parents you seem like a nice kid why why did you choose to smoke why don't you just um blah 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 so there will be a lot of options okay and the key to tackle such kind of question is like you want to know where the patient is standing at this point so uh, you need to first understand what perception the child has about the smoking and once you have that grasp you can you know you can uh, take the discussion further so you have to choose something like you know at what point will smoking become a problem for you okay so at what point uh, will smoking become a problem for you so you want to know the perception uh, from the patient point of view okay so this will be the correct answer this is a classic case of you know organ donation and they will tell you whether uh, what will be the charge what will be the profit you can make by selling organs so no it is an absolute no you you cannot make any profit out of uh, selling your organs but yeah uh, you can sell your renewable uh, organs i mean to say renewable product of your body for example sperm or ovum that you can sell but not the organs okay solid organs um, but there is a there is a caveat that you can uh, you can charge for the cost of travel and lodging but you will not make a profit out of selling your organ this is a trick question where an active heroin user comes to you and asks for syringe uh, now many of many of students might think that okay i will i will not prescribe him syringe because i want him not to use heroin it is bad for his health he can it can kill him but then uh, you want your main responsibility here is to make him safe from acquiring infection that he might use if he does not use that sterile syringe like for example acquiring hepatitis c infection or hiv infection or any other uh, disease that can be transmitted through infected needles so uh, the answer should be to encourage him to be safe in whatever habit he is by prescribing the sterile syringe okay so you basically prescribe the sterile syringe a very important small point that i want to make is in all situation involving life or limb threatening cases in minors physician may treat without any consent so this is uh, this is one of the very important case where consent is not necessary to uh, start the treatment uh, that is life and limb threatening cases 
this is scenario of non compliance so it is it is always very bad uh, to you know assume a patient is non compliant whether it is an insulin dependent diabetic case or an epileptic teenager whose phenytoin level is low for example let us take this example and talk so there are myriad of factors which you know could lead to falsely accusing a patient of non compliance for example chronic alcoholism use of certain antibiotics and high dose of salicylates uh, are only a few of those which can lower phenytoin levels giving up on a patient for non compliance before allowing him to explain himself is inappropriate so you will always allow time for the patient to explain himself okay because there could be many reason of his decreased phenytoin level in his blood uh, and also taking control away from the patient and giving it to his or her uh, parents will only antagonize your relationship with the patient so teenagers are often battle for control and cherish the opportunity to make decision for themselves taking that away only increases the ag aggression uh, in the patient okay so it will it will basically harm the doctor patient relationship so be very careful while you are dealing with the questions uh, which which includes teenager as a point of focus this is a case of a patient who smells like alcohol is alert and oriented and there is a police officer who request you to draw blood to check for the blood alcohol level but the patient does not want this to be done most appropriate action in this case will be to ask the police officer if he has source warrant if he does not refuse to draw the blood so here if he has source warrant he has got all the powers to do all sort of checkings he want to do uh, in the patient but if he does not have any um, source warrant you as a doctor are not allowed to go against the autonomy of the patient okay this is a case of a guy with a infectious mononucleosis on physical examination you find that there is a massive splenomegaly uh, now the patient request you not to tell this to anyone uh, especially to his coach uh, because he is having a great match coming week uh, so in this case you, there will be two option the decision to tell it to the parent uh, or the coach because you don't want the patient to have any sort of trauma which will lead to the splenic uh, rupture but you have to choose the coach you have to choose the coach over the parent because you after telling the coach you are you make the patient to be more safe you you prevent the patient to participate in the sport and you make the patient safe okay if a question involves different generation of bruises over the body then you can definitely suspect abuse and inform to the cps child protective service next is a uh, physician should not be primarily or regular care provider for their immediate family members except for the routine care uh, for example minor problem okay two areas where it may be permissible however are in cases of emergencies and in isolated setting where no other qualified physician is readily available okay so uh, be very careful about these kind of cases these were some important cases not included in first aid from khan ethics uh, the next video will be on 100 cases by Conrad and Fisher. Thank you for watching.